Welcome back to WordPress Made Easy. I'm Dave Swift, your instructor. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to click the notification bell to get notified when new videos go live. Now, in this video, we're talking about users inside of WordPress. This is gonna be kind of a confusing topic. And honestly, most of the time that I see it brought up is when someone's using something like WooCommerce for e-commerce or maybe a online course platform like LearnDash or Tutor LMS, and they're wondering, well, how do people sign up for one of my courses or how do people buy my products? Well, the answer is WordPress users. Anytime someone is doing anything on your WordPress website, they're going to be added as a user. Now, don't worry. There are different permission levels so that not everybody can do the same thing. Someone who's shopping on your store obviously can't also post your blog, but you certainly can as an administrator of your website. In fact, there are many different user levels. So if you wanted to have people on your website that only were able to post and really do nothing else, you could create that ability. All right, enough talk. Let's get over into WordPress. WordPress and let me show you what I'm talking about. Over here in the left hand sidebar, we've got this section that says users. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, because I'm the only user on this site right now, there's only one account, but I could easily add a new one. And in fact, anytime someone signs up through your website to even leave a comment, you'll find their username show up over here in this window. Let's click add new. Anytime you create a new user, you're going to have to add a username and email address. They can even be the same thing if you'd like. First name, last name, and website are all options. Now, when someone signs up through something like LearnDash or WooCommerce, often WordPress will send them an email telling them to create a password. If you want to create an account for someone, like maybe you're getting support for one of your premium plugins and you want to create an account so that the developers can log in and give you some troubleshooting ability, you'd probably want to go through this process, create a new user, and then you'll click right here where it says show password. And you can actually just take the generated password they give you and give that to the development company so that they can have an account to log in and do whatever adjustment they need. That way you don't actually have to enter their real email address. You can just create kind of a throwaway account for them. But most of the time when people are signing up, they're not even going to see this screen. We're just kind of going through it for the sake of learning what to do. There's the option to send the user a notification about their account. And usually I'll leave that checked. And now here is where the heart of the matter is roles. This is the most important part to understand. Now by default, WordPress has five different roles available. Subscribers are going to be people who are just subscribed to your website. Basically, they can leave comments and really not much else. And the next level up from that is going to be a contributor. Now, what a contributor can do is they can write their own articles, but they can't publish them without approval from someone higher up on the food chain. An author, on the other hand, they can write their own articles and they can publish them, but they can't do anything about anyone else's articles. So if a contributor asks an author to help them get their article published on the site, they just wouldn't have the permission to do it. The next level up from that is an editor. Now, just like the name sounds, an editor can approve posts. They can approve anybody's posts. They can edit their posts. And of course, they can even create their own posts. It's very much kind of like a newspaper. Paper, right? We've got different levels of management. At the very top, we have the administration, and that's what your account is going to be when you create a brand new WordPress website. An administrator can do anything on the site. They can change the preferences, create new user accounts. They can even change people's passwords. So administrator accounts should be given out very, very conservatively. They'll have the ability to destroy your entire website if they don't know what they're doing, or maybe if they're malicious. Most of the time when you're getting support for a premium theme or a plugin, you will have to give the developer administrator access. If this is a plugin you've paid for from a well-known and recommended plugin or theme. You don't really have to worry about this. They don't care about wrecking your website. They care more about their reputation. So they would never do anything to intentionally harm your site. So I do recommend giving administrator access in those circumstances where you've paid for support and they're just trying to help you out. Now, WordPress is not limited to these five user roles. In fact, there are several plugins out there that will add user roles without even asking you permission. WooCommerce will add customers and shop managers. LearnDash adds group leaders. And there's even plugins to create your own user roles with your own set of permissions, like user role editor. So that's probably all you need to know about user roles. Now, I did mention early in this video that subscribers would have the ability to comment. But did you know that out of the box, there's really nothing restricting anybody from leaving comments on your website? Now, if you've got a good plugin installed to limit comment spam, like anti-spam bee, that can really cut things down. But you still 
still might want to consider limiting comments to people who are logged in. To do that, just go over to your settings and go down to discussion. Here you're going to find all of the settings for comments. And one of the first options under other comment settings is that users must be registered and logged in to comment. I usually leave this turned on just because I want to have one extra hurdle to get someone to leave a comment. And besides, this way I can capture their email address if I need to follow up with them. So that's going to do it for user roles inside of WordPress. If you have any comments or questions, leave me a message down below or head over to our Facebook group and chat over there. We'll start a thread dedicated to this entire course. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.